segregation. It's something that happens naturally all around us. And if it's all around us, in our city of Los Angeles, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, even in our own families, then why don't we ever talk about it? I had the opportunity to sit down with Reverend Jeff Carr and talk about some of the current issues of segregation in Los Angeles today. Well, my name is uh, Reverend Jeff Carr, and uh, I spent a good part of my life living in central Los Angeles. In fact, I moved there in 1987. Uh, right out of college and to do an internship at Los Angeles First Church of the Nazarene and they gave me a 10-speed bicycle and a basketball and said start sports programs for kids. Living and working in Los Angeles for so many years, Reverend Jeff Carr has had a first-hand experience at seeing how segregation has affected the city of Los Angeles. Segregation is as much a form of economics as it is a race. Um, if you look at folks, particularly say in South LA where you might have lots of, uh, it's not necessarily lots of folks who are sort of segregated from the general population. There's not just African Americans there who've been traditionally segregated, you know, in segregation in the way you would think of it, but also there's Latinos there and what they have in common is they're both lower socioeconomic area, uh, income levels and so they're really impoverished peoples which really is another form of segregation, is economic segregation. So I think in some ways, economics um, may be driving segregation in this country, and particularly in Los Angeles, as much as race, although I think race still obviously is a contributing factor because of the history of race in this country. In the past, segregation has been a hurtful word, a word of rejection, a word that told people they weren't welcome because they are different, all coming from the mouths of supposed superiority. I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny and I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. We cringe when we hear a man say such words, but do we really live much differently when we have the freedom to live differently? It seems to me we segregate naturally. We hang out with people who talk like us, look like us, and think like we do. It's a lot easier and more comfortable that way. You know, junior high kids self-segregate and high school kids self-segregate every single day. I mean, at your school, there's probably the brainiac kids, you know, there's the athletes, there's the, you know, the cool hipsters, there's the druggies, you know, and those kids, high school kids, students are actually self-segregating or self-identifying with a group that then segregates themselves and they don't hang out with other kids. As I took a day to travel around LA, I did not really feel a sense of segregation, but of celebration. I saw all nationalities enjoying what different cultures have to offer. Different foods, different music, and different merchandise. It would be sad to have all parts of LA look the same and not be able to get a sense of all the different people and history that make up our great city. I realize, though, that there are hard feelings about past wrongs and current wrongs. I realize that there are still difficult issues of segregation that go on. What if we forgot about the past and lived in the present, our present? And what if we removed this imaginary line that separates people? What if we forgot about segregation and became one race, the human race? Because wasn't that what it was supposed to be from the very beginning, where all men are created equal? What if we decided that ethnicity doesn't matter and we can just accept people for who they are? Even though we don't come from the same background, we can still have something in common. My friends aren't Filipino. They're mostly like other races. But since we enjoy skateboarding, that's something that we're, we both like. So race doesn't really matter. You know, the whole thing that we were doing when I went to the city to try and re-engineer the way we responded to gangs in the city was to both figure out how to bring people together and we used something called, we started something called Summer Night Lights which was to really reclaim the parks in those neighborhoods and to make, create safe spaces and to let everybody know in the summertime that those parks were a safe space where anybody from the neighborhood could come and actually be welcome and participate in extended hours and programming. Summer Night Lights not only helps to drop the rate of violence during the summer, but also serves as a way to reach out to people in need. From my involvement in Summer Night Lights, I have seen firsthand how great it is when people of every ethnicity come together to have a good time and to celebrate life. 
not worrying about where they come from or what they look like, but accepting them for who they genuinely are. I think in terms of self-segregation, though, if somebody chooses to not affiliate, whether that's for economic reasons or racial reasons or perceptions they have about someone, the only way you break down those that kind of segregation is by changing people's hearts and changing the perceptions or the stereotypes they might have about somebody who's very different from them. And the only way I know to do that is to get people together in a place where they are able to step out of their comfort zone and begin to understand maybe the experience of somebody who's very different from them and or they think is very different from them and when they share that common experience then they suddenly realize that maybe they're much more alike than they are different and then that begins to break down you know some of those barriers that create sort of self-segregation. I have come to realize that if we the people are going to change the word segregation into a celebration then we are going to have to move out of our economic, racial, and social comfort zones. We need to make the effort to talk together, play together, eat together, and especially love and serve one another. And since this is our present, and we have the choice to make a difference, let's start today.